Hello, today we're going to do an update on my algae situation and my potassium nitrate dosing. Hello and welcome back to Armour Azul TV. I'm going to give you a little update on my algae situation. And so we'll start, uh, last video I had uh, introduced a sea hair and it did a really good job of munching some of my green hair algae. But literally like two days after I published that video, I found the sea hair dead. Um, I'm not really sure what happened, uh, but it's a common kind of phenomena of uh, people getting sea hairs and having them uh, do well for a couple of days and then they just kind of drop dead. Uh, I'm not sure whether he just, uh, I mean, clearly he didn't or she didn't run out of fruit because there's still algae in the tank. So possibly I just didn't provide the right uh, type of food for the sea hare, or possibly it could have been something related to collection or how long they've been kind of kept in uh, the wholesaler before I got them. Uh, but it's uh, kind of sad. Uh, I, did, I did manage to kind of find him about a day after he was dead. Uh, the good part is, uh, there wasn't any, uh, it didn't seem that he released anything toxic in the tank. So so I've been dosing the potassium nitrate for the past uh, several weeks now and my levels are now up. Uh, if you remember about a month ago, they were down to zero and now with uh, about a one mil dosing a day, I am up to 2.5. And I am noticing some change in how fast the green hair algae is growing. So if, if you uh, look at this boulder here, this was really covered with uh, algae. And as my nitrates have, are getting higher, I'm noticing that the algae is kind of slowing down, perhaps not receding a little bit, but it, it is definitely slowing down. And what I've been noticing is that, if you could maybe see here, is that the algae has got this kind of little bit of a slimish layer on top, which kind of maybe looks like cyano, and I am noticing a little bit of uh, a small buildup of, of kind of cyano on, on the sand bed, or maybe not cyano, but you know, so some, some kind of fil film algae. So here's what I'm thinking. Over the course of my tank, uh, the history of my tank, whenever I have uh, appreciable levels of nitrates and phosphates, I, I typically have very little algae issues, especially green hair algae. And just from my dosing of nitrates over the past few weeks, I am noticing that it's somehow, whatever whatever it is, it's somehow leading to kind of a, a slower growth rates of my green hair algae. So I guess my hypothesis here is that the extra nutrients uh, leads to different type of algae growing or, or possibly cyan or bacteria in my tank that directly compete with the green hair algae. So the idea is somehow green hair algae specializes on on or thrives when when you have like unbalanced nutrients and when you have more nitrates in the water column and phosphates in the water column that that kind of promotes uh, that promotes the growth of other types of algae and, and bacteria the end result is that when you have a diversity of, of algae and bacteria uh, no one type of algae can get a foothold of the tank so ho hopefully that makes sense. And, and again, that, that's just an idea that I, I've, been, uh, I've been thinking about a lot of, you know, why is it that I had no algaes when I had 10 nitrates and 0.1 phosphates, and I have a lot of green hair algae when I have zero nitrates and a little bit of phosphates. So again, just to summarize, I think the idea is that the green hair algae outcompetes everything else when, when one of the nutrients, one of the elements is, is low. And from, from my experience, enhancing nitrates balances the board a little bit or, or makes things uh, uh, tilt in other directions other than green hair algae. All right, that, that was just an, an idea. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I am, uh, I'm not gonna get another sea hair. Uh, I might uh, invest in a few more turbo snails uh, and, and see whether they could uh, remove the last little bits of uh, clumps here. Uh, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, the other thing, the other new update to the tank is uh, if you notice, uh, rainbow trout is back. Uh, 
So I had uh, this uh, pintail fairy wrasse uh, in my tank for about a year. Uh, several months ago, I noticed that he was getting a little bit beat up. He had some damage on his fins and I gave him a nice little uh, uh, time alone, time not time out for him, but just time to kind of recuperate and, and get fat again in my Evo. And I did introduce him using an acclimation box, uh, acclimation box yesterday. And uh, he's getting along. I haven't seen any signs of aggression uh, today. So hopefully this kind of will continue. Uh, if you're counting, I now have uh, five wrasses in my tank. Uh, the pintail fairy wrasse. We have the eight line flasher wrasse here. Beautiful fish. The carpenter flasher wrasse there. And uh, you see the yellow tail tamon wrasse in the back and my Moyer leopard wrasse. So five wrasses in total. I love my wrasses. All right, so let's do a top-down tour and then uh, I'm gonna end with uh, just some uh, new plans uh, that hopefully I'll implement between uh, now and my next video, which will involve uh, changing the aquascape of the tank a little bit. Uh, I really need to uh, frag some of my colonies. This one is uh, getting uh, really large and you could kind of see how uh, close it is to uh, the glass. Uh, I keep actually knocking big chunks of it every time I clean the glass and uh, I really should uh, I really should uh, glue some of them. But anyway, it's uh, looking really happy. I, I am noticing a little bit of an extra pop on my SPS with the potassium nitrate dosing. It's always hard to tell whether it's the potassium or the nitrates, but uh, I think some combination is, uh, is uh, making the SPS a bit happy. All right, here is the tenuous, uh, looking uh, pretty good. Uh, I love the polyp extension on, uh, on the tenuous. And uh, here is, uh, well, uh, <laughs> the, here's a dead expensive frag is, <laughs> is what I wanted to say. This was the atomic fire, uh, atomic fireball, I think. Yeah, uh, now, now uh, not so atomic. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, maybe maybe it is atomic, uh, Chernobyl style uh, Acropora. Yeah, it's it's always you know, kind of tricky investing in uh, in. Uh, look at me saying investing, trying to justify uh, spending lots of money for uh, tiny little pieces of sticks. But yeah, buying expensive corals is is always a little bit dicey. Uh, I had like a batch of uh, really expensive corals. I, I, I'm not going to tell you how much I spent, but I, I went to this LFS and I dropped uh, a big chunk of coin for about four frags and uh, two of them uh, died. So I'm kind of unhappy. Uh, not buying from that LFS again, I think. Uh, all right, let's uh, zoom uh, the Hawkins Ishanada. Looking really good, I believe. I'm kind of shading it. Uh, here a little bit but there you go very very pretty colors uh, the Jason Fox Jolt uh, still kind of looking teeny tiny not encrusting but not dead uh, if it died then it'll be three out of four expensive corals dead <laughs> so hang in there little guy uh, all right let's go back uh, Applejack uh, Applejack is looking really good, I think. Look at the encrusting on it. Oh, what happened there? Got splashed by the wrasse. Um, and uh, this is Golden Jaw Dropper, also looking really good. It's kind of funny. So, uh, like, these were also high-end frags bought from uh, um, a fellow reefer. And, I, you know, I typically find that when I buy frags from a fellow reefer, you know, like somebody's basement tank, uh, they tend to do a lot better than from, uh, from an LFS. So... Uh, maybe I should just avoid buying uh, SPS from an LFS. Uh, and then this is my blueberry uh, wine. You can see it's uh, uh, really encrusting really well and it's starting to grow again. And you know, if you, the algae on this rock looks really bad, but it looked a lot worse about uh, a month ago or, or two weeks ago. So uh, something something is increasing. And, and you guys see what I mean about how I, I'm getting this kind of film over uh, over the green hair algae. So I think the extra nitrates are, are causing a bacterial film to grow over the green hair algae. And I think that suffocates the green hair algae. Now, yes, so I may be treating one kind of nuisance algae for another, but you know, I could deal with a little bit of slime, right? That it just kind of blows off, power head, it, it's gone. Uh, I never really had cyano issues with uh, with high nitrates before, uh, but the green hair algae kind of does look really nasty. So uh, 
I'm, I'm okay with uh, with treating a little bit of cyano for less green hair algae. I guess what I'm trying to say is the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit. All right. Uh, this is the pink Cadillac. Uh, let's see if I could get the exposure the right. A uh, very beautiful colony. Uh, green base, pink tips, uh, and uh, blue polyps. Very pretty. I also, this is another another colony that I have to kind of keep on top of or else it kind of uh, uh, takes over lots of space really quickly. So need to frag this bit too. Uh, here we have uh, the, hmm, let me zoom, oh, I can't zoom out. Uh, this is my uh, Cali Tort, uh, looking really pretty, I think, going really well. And behind it here is a bonsai. There, purple bonsai, very nice. And what we have here is uh, Marvin the Martian. And above it is a refraft rainbow loom. Uh, there we go. And this is refraft pot of gold Millie, uh, showing good polyp extension and it's encrusting again. And this is an, uh, one of a frag from uh, a fellow reefer, not an LFS. So, oh, and here is the super special brown forest Acropora. Uh, you know, if you want. Uh, I could sell you a frag of this uh, super exclusive coral for like a thousand dollars an inch. Uh, it's beautiful. It, the colors are super stable. They don't really change tank to tank. It does have a very slow growth rate, but uh, I think it's well worth the investment. So PM me if you want a frag of the brown forest, uh, only <laughs> only available at the Amro Azul TV. <laughs> Yeah, this colony is officially dead. This was the shockaholic. Uh, bye bye shockaholic. It was good when, uh, well, actually you were never good, but uh, you, you had your moments. Uh, this is the major laser, beautiful, beautiful colony. Uh, well, mini colony, I, I, I love it. And I just, I, I really like how uh, the colors, uh, and you know, it looks really pretty from up here, but on the side, it also looks uh, pr uh, really pretty. Uh, then we have the Fox Flame and Acropora, uh, the Fox Flame, Flame Fox, I think. Uh, I think I want to move this colony and, and give it a little bit more light. It's, it's looking a bit pale. And then on the top, uh, in the middle boulder here, we have a refraft, uh, oh, that's also a, a rainbow loom. It, it doesn't look as bright in lower light. So I think th this is, uh, the rainbow loom, if, if you have it, you could really kind of bake it and, and give it more uh, more juice. Uh, uh, otherwise, it just kind of looks like a green slimer. Uh, and here is my uh, beautiful, beautiful electric Mayaji tort, looking good. And then my green slimer on the top here. All right, so that's it for the SPS tour. All right, before I leave, I just want to share with you uh, the plans to slightly re-aquascape the tank. And hopefully this is going to be the last re-aquascape that I do. So the plan is next warm sunny day, I plan to take this big boulder out and quickly remove about a third of its base. And that will drop it down to be on level with this boulder here and that boulder there. And I think this will kind of create a little bit more balance. And also it's going to be so much easier to light because right now, uh, because this is so high up and this is lower, I actually have my middle radi radion kind of beaming a little bit less energy than the two outside ones. Uh, and I'd like to actually have all of the radions having uh, being set in the same way, just to kind of make it easier to manage and, and estimate what the par is. And so this, the plan is to kind of go down. And then what I'm planning to do is actually put a different structure here. Uh, right now, the structure is, you see, uh, let's see, there we go from this side. Uh, this structure is composed of one rock here and one rock there. And right now, it's, it's essentially being held in place uh, just by, by the shape. So there is a bit of groove in this rock here, and this kind of sits in there. And this, this rock kind of just props it up. 
Uh, it's not super stable and you know, every time I, I try to put a frag in there, I just feel a bit of wobble and I'm not too happy with it. So I did actually manage to get a couple of really nice pieces of Bucani that they were in my tank before. Actually, it was just one piece of Bucani that was in my tank before. Oddly enough, it was in this spot here back in my first like uh, first edition Aquascape. Uh, so I took that one piece and I cut it in half and one and you there was actually so you could imagine a big rock, you cut it in half and you flip it and it created a really, really nice shape, but also a very stable shape. So the plan is to remove the back part of this rock here and then add this new rock and you'll, you'll see it in my next video. Uh, so that's that's it for uh, uh, for the re-aquascape. Hopefully I'll, I'll get it done soon so you guys could see it. And I think ultimately it's gonna result into a more kind of harmonious aquascape and an aquascape where, where the SPS are gonna be much easier to light correctly because everything is essentially gonna be on the same uh, level. All right, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you soon. Uh, please stay safe and uh, enjoy, uh, enjoy the month of May.